What's up guys, thank you for clicking on the video. So in this one, we always try to get every Corvette at SEMA. It's the first day of SEMA. We hoofed it hard, we tried to get everything. It's a little slimmer this year. In terms of cars, I feel like there's a lot of vendors here and there's still a lot of content at SEMA, but I, for some reason it's just like there's no turnout with vehicles. So we go through all the Optima vets, uh, all C8s, everything's gonna be in here, every Corvette at SEMA that I could find. So I do C4, C5, and C6 parts. You guys might know me from Sleepy Eye Headlights, so check that out on nightdrivetv.com. So check out the video, I hope you enjoy it, and I appreciate it, catch you Moving forward, you ready Lace? Let's go. So guys, I want to put your attention to the top of the screen. I have a bar. Uh, in this case, it's yellow. It's shrinking as we go through the C1 generation. You can see C1 generation in green. Uh, so basically, you can scroll. You can go to each generation that you are particularly looking for. I must say in this show, some C1, some C2s, really worth seeing, even if you're not into that generation. Uh, we got a number of C8s. Overall, the turnout, like I said, was a little bit soft. But hey, we still had some cars to look at, so enjoy the video. Dynamat, if you're interested in suppressing noises and sounds, NVH, use some Dynamat. Very cool first gen. They're up and coming. I feel like I will aim to have a C4 here next year to just shake up the game. It's an old C1, really neat. As I mentioned earlier, we had some great C2s in this show, so definitely uh, take a look through all of these as I will direct you to the top bar. Uh, it is shrinking as we go through the C2 generation. Quite a number of C2s in the show, so it was a good surprise. This is in the uh, Optima area. We're going to go over a couple Optima vents here. Here, Jackson Booth. Looks like an electrified C2. People want to see it happen, so you know, it is what it is. So it looks like most of this is probably going to be battery pack you know, management system. These run cooling systems, generally speaking. It doesn't look like air conditioner works, probably still working on it. Just trying to see. Let's see. Looks like AC motor adapter to some type of auto. 
charging port where it should be, of course. Doesn't quite look functional yet. But interesting concept. You can see their AC motor there. There's a gear lever. I've always assumed that they're probably going to try to make turnkey systems to basically start to execute these swaps in replacement of VH to just try and, you know, for California or certain places with laws that are going to try and restrict gas use or octane use. Imagine something's going to come eventually. Uh, this is probably going to be what people are going to be doing a lot more of. I'm going to voice over this because of uh, music playing in the background. It'll be a copyright issue. So this was an interesting uh, C2 build. It kind of has this uh, custom carbon roof, which takes on kind of the shape of the C2 roof. But then uh, the early C3s uh, got a bit of arrow in the back. It's all a, like a one piece uh, front end. Um, no headlights, obviously. It has some slits there, which I suspect are probably some LED light bars. Very interesting car. Lace liked this car a lot. I don't know. She, uh, she said she liked the shape. It's the Battle of the Builders area. Try and get you a look here. They're doing kind of a feature on it. These are usually young builders um, that are competing uh, for a SEMA award. Um, I have schools. I don't know. They kind of mix it up, but nice car. I don't know what's special about it in particular. It looks like it has some C7 brakes on it. And it probably has an LS or an LT, something in there. With the BASF booth. Oh, it's not good. Some cool tunnels here. Charged, clean. Very cool color, like a satin green. Pretty, pretty wire tuck. Wire tuck there. Like the coatings and the color scheme of the school. This is the Superformance booth. And uh, they make a lot of component car kits, I guess you can call them. Very high quality, very well known for the GT40s. Looks like they have a Grand Sport Corvette. This would be a heck of a build for somebody that was in the mood to put something together. Check out Superformance. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. Please, I encourage you to thumbs up, like this video, leave a comment on the YouTube channel, share this video, and obviously a super thanks would also be great. This is hard work getting out there, but I like to show uh, everybody the SEMA show in the best way possible, all organized, so that you can just rapidly go through everything. It's a heck of a walk, miles and miles, but hope you appreciate it, guys. color got some very custom uh, arrow you can see it's fitted to the back of the car very clean very good seams great stance on there got some millwood brakes I'm sure it's got some kind of potent LS something in there all chrome blacked out some more arrow down beneath seen the C4 at SEMA to my recollection a very long time but this is an actual grand sport I believe yeah not much to look at but it is a grand sport and it is a C4 at SEMA 
Hopefully we see a lot more C4 soon. So prepare for uh, quite a number of C5s here in the Optima uh, Street Car Challenge uh, competition, whatever you want to call it. Uh, these cars are very competitive. Obviously, a lot of people run them. But if you have a C5, uh, you can get some good ideas of what's effective looking and uh, things like that. So as always, guys, please subscribe to the channel. I make a lot of different C5 products things like that. Uh, for the uh, C5, I will be doing a lot more ahead in 2023. So I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching. Same approach arrow wise, got some. Can't go any worse. <laughs> yeah. We got some air gates kind of ex experimenting here a little bit with some kind of some air gates to direct that air over that rear wing very interesting got z06 wheels on it comes around the internet most of the recipe seems to be very similar for all the optima cars uh he's got some pretty big arrows so i assume he's running in a different class i don't know otl unlimited i don't know what that is And the same setup. So. Oh yeah, he's running a lot of pressure relief back here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here you are. If you guys follow Night Drive TV and you're in the group, you notice this is his car. I've thrown up on the banner there, so he is here. Gonna make a run for it this this uh, this time around. Everybody got a sub. Does that get you something? Well, we have a C5 here with a uh, kind of a unique front end take. I'll give you a good look here. We got a lone C5 over here with a tiger shark. Uh, it's, uh, it's here. It's, kinda, it's here. There you go. It's a C5. No more else to say. It's a C5. guys don't aren't familiar with this car he runs uh, global time attack this thing has uh, been through a lot of development it's a very fast car so you can usually check him out I I believe he has a YouTube channel but G speed works a lot with him and uh, obviously he runs good life uh, and uh, it's a very very fast car it keeps pushing it all the time so it's a great bet if you're not familiar you can uh, you see he does some very extreme aero twin turbos mounted down in the fenders he said he can get it at them pretty quickly so for track maintenance and any issues but big arrow for sure you know depending on your involvement you can be very uh very built or you can you know try to compete here with something fairly stock you know probably not gonna win but 
A lot of the aero approaches seem to be the same on C6s. I definitely would like to add some new possibilities with uh, some Night Drive TV products for Corvette, but we'll see. Falcon Drift Corvette. It's a great car, very competitive, very cool car. Love to see him sticking with that. It's been running for quite some time, but look, as you can see, it's no beauty queen. Very cool car. This is power cooling booth here. Supercharged, probably got some nitrous in there. So, oh, yeah, I see the purge. It's right there. Here, and we have Ivan Tampi's same car that he brings every year. It doesn't change. Last year, not sure. So I'm voicing over more here. This is the Ben Pack booth. Uh, we had some music in the background. Not many C7s this year at all. Um, you know, lots of C5s because of Optima uh, Challenge. Uh, Actually, C2s really showed up this year, and uh, so it was uh, a lot of good cars, C1s even, uh, very surprising, but uh, overall, not a bad year. Uh, Danny Pop was out there actually driving this car, uh, so it was nice to see him. He's usually in a C5, and that's uh, who I'm explaining now. He's driving this car. He's sitting up here right up front, so great to see him out there and uh, back at it. Got quite a history, a winning history, so going well. It's him right here. He's driving. We're going to jump over here. Southern. Hi. The Pandem. like a uh, an aftermarket Z06 style wing already not sure who makes it may want to check out this company here looks like we got another check her out looks like it's got some vertical doors on it what do you think about it? you want some Lambo doors on your Cadillac Scott <laughs> Red on bronze, kind of a uh, kind of interesting spooler here. Obviously, a uh, it's got the clear cover. So I think somebody's selling this clear cover, so you can see the motor. Got some linen filter stuff. Side skirts.
me see Ro Rohana on there. I'm not sure what they sell. Or if they do sell anything. So shield. Looks pretty run of the mill. Looks like Street Hunter wide body. Universal air bags. We got another one over here. Yeah, no, no, I totally understand. Uh, Well, I'm going to put it in here because it's a C8. C8R package, actually, with some yellow wheels. But, obviously, this is for you guys that are in the northeast or bad areas. You put your car in the capsule for the winter. Fits in there, as you can see. Car capsule. So, this is Amelia's car. She's the one she was working with. Um... I guess a few companies there in California uh, pushing the fuel system trying to get this up so she was claiming the fastest uh, C8 in the world and things like that so you're gonna follow her if you want to check out her C8 if you're not familiar with who she is they were pushing the system um, can't see much here but this was a uh, twin turbo or pretty early and uh, she was running nines or something and I guess that's why it's a number nine on there so I don't know, this is just a run of the mill HTC. Nice color combo. That rapid blue or whatever it is with the yellow calipers. Hard top coupe, nothing to see here. Just pretty much stock C8. Yep, so we're here at the uh, Pro Charger booth. Um, C8, basically, tell me a little bit about the kit and uh, what you have here. Well, the C8 kit, man, it's the, the hot new thing. Obviously, people, yeah. people love these cars and the more that they get them, or the more that are out there, right. the more they fall in love with them. And everybody's it, waiting for more power, yeah, right? Yeah, more power. So, 725 horsepower oh, wow. crankshaft. Crank. crankshaft. Okay, to the tire. This did you... car is actually, so the red car, red car is about 654, 654 is about on average gas. This okay. There's no ringer. Right. Um, our blue car runs a little bit more power. Blue car's made 684, 685, okay. 686. And that's on pump, ga pump gas? or you... Yes, pump gas, 93. Nice, okay. Um, and then our black car, I want to say 6. Okay. A black car, I don't, whatever, they're all different, right? Right, right, right. So the black car was our lowest factory dynoing car, right. the blue car was our highest. So the, the okay. gain is actually the same. Right. So, so bolt-on kit, generally speaking? Yep. So every single thing bolts on. The only thing that gets cut or trimmed in the entire car is this carpet. So it's a bit of a permanent mod. Yeah, but if you wanted to buy a piece of trunk carpet to replace it, right, right. you're good to go. So we, we can supply you with the carbon or a plastic. This is normally covered, obviously. Yeah, right. We're just showing it off for the show. Easiest installation of any Corvette we've ever had. Okay. I'm going to blow your mind right now. You know how right, easy it is? Bl blow my mind. How, how so you're going to take your car. We're going to bring you a box of parts. Or you're going to get a box of parts, right? right? You unbolt that wheel. Okay. Take out the wheel liner. You're going to have that done in about 15 minutes, right? right. So that's how you install the intercooler, uh, heat exchanger, pump, lines, etc. Then you're going to jack the car up. You're just going to take the belly pan off the bottom of it. Everything on the front of the motor is accessible then. Right. Just reach up in there, bolt it on. Right. After that, put the car back down. Everything else is right here. Okay. So there's no coolant. There's right. no oil. Right. No and this is the self-contained? Self-contained blower. Okay. The air to water system is all going to run to the lines that you installed. So right. all you got to do then is once you got that bolted on, fill up the intercooler. That's that. Right, so well, you're talking easy. 725 crank, basically you said people are going to wonder about fueling. How do you handle fueling? What's what's the deal with the tuning? So when you get your box, you're actually going to get a box with a certificate in it. You take your PCM out of the car, you send that to us, right. we're going to load a calibration in it. That it doesn't have to be I can't even tell you how much time on. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah I bet. Lot. 
and it, and it works in conjunction ECU and the TCU talk to each other they okay. understand the power Every, right. this car knows exactly how much air is going into it it's okay. not lied to nothing uh, one thing you're also going to get and you can't really see it's not really glorious but right. There's actually a three-bar map sensor on board, so okay. the car understands boost. Right. So if a guy wanted to log it, you can right. actually log okay. boost pressure. Okay. And there's also a manifold charge temperature sensor on board. Okay. So the car now knows air inlet temperature coming into the supercharger, and it knows the temperature leaving the intercooler. Right. So fan control, timing maps, and all that right. is actually based on what's going in the engine. Nice. Um, as far as the dual clutch, there any clutch yeah. issues, anything like that? I mean, I know it seems like they find so a I, ceiling. I, I, will, I will fully admit, back in the day when you're yeah. like, everybody's learning, right. anybody that said that they didn't hurt a clutch, they're probably lying. They're lying, right, they're lying, yeah. Right? <laughs> so this car, I'm very proud. This car, we always left stock. Yeah. This was the one with stock clutch, stock axle, stock everything. Um, one of the other cars does have an aftermarket clutch in it. Right. We always wanted to make sure that we had at least two cars in the fleet uh -huh. as stock as possible that customers would use. So, again, like I said, this car knows exactly how much right. airflow is going into it. Right. Yeah. So that way the ECU can talk to the TCU right. to make the decisions on how to do right. handoffs. So back in the day, that wasn't a very easy yeah. task. They were kind One of piggyback fueling to. it and doing yeah, yeah, some yeah. trickery, it seems like. Right. So now you're saying what you're saying is... The, the ECU truly understands what's happening. It's fueling it as such. It understands the torque right. it makes. It understands the torque request coming from the transmissions, both incoming right. and outgoing. And that, I mean, so that way when you're paddle shifting. Right. And drivability, obviously, idle, part throttles, out Amazing. of boost, Amazing. still good. Any Amazing. chances of it passing emissions in certain states, Absolutely. do you know? Yeah. Yeah, we're actually going to be. So no, no engine right, lights, right no to, real issues. No. Yeah. And every all your all your DTCs are still on. Nothing's being blocked. Okay. So being turned yeah. off. It runs up, runs the cat tests. It runs all wow. the so, tests. Yeah, all your emissions so requirements. So the only reason why this isn't emissions compliant yet is yeah. because we are coming out with the Corvette kit or the convertible kit. Okay. And we want right, right for we the. We want to pass them at the same time. Oh, okay. Yeah. That way they're not we're yeah. not going to do it twice. Twice, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so re retail basically overall cost of the kit. Uh, so I believe it's about eighteen nine. Um, obviously, we have options like the carbon and stuff like that. Okay, so you sell the them. actual plate and the, the kind of the cover? It's just normally a, a plastic. Okay, cover, yeah, right. We right, can right. upgrade to the carbon, which nice. is a hand laid, really pretty. So, it's a yeah. pretty piece. If you want some power, I mean, uh, you yeah. can get it here. So, if you have complete solution, yeah. no problem. Comes in a box. Comes in a you box. Can install <laughs> it in your garage. I mean, like, ready to rock and roll. Well, I mean, good deal. You can go 132, 130, 132 miles an hour yeah. in this car. You, me, him. Yeah. Every single time this nice. car goes down the track. And on pump gas, so no meth, yeah, no, yeah. nothing no, no, like no. that? Okay. It'd be cool to see one on meth. Yeah, yeah, we, to pump it up it. a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, how many pounds of boost? People are going to ask these kind of, I don't know why everybody needs seven to know this. Half, seven and a half, right? <laughs> How many pounds of boost? I'm like, it's seven and a half. relative to the compressor, you know what I mean? Right. I'm like, seven so. and a half pounds of boost. Now, granted, that's going to be relative to the day. Sometimes there's a little more. A little sure, less, sure. But uh, right about seven and a half. Again, the reason why we did this, that is about the end of the line on the factory fuel system. Right. So if you want to do more, cool, whatever, you're going to have to find a way to fuel it. Yeah, that's where but the like, piggybacks and all kind of extra yep. injectors and but people are trying. But the thing is, once, you drive, like, once somebody drives one of these with the Stage 2 with the tuned PCM, they're like, oh, that's actually really fast. Yeah. Like, I really like that. Yeah, I'm that. sure so, it's plenty. I'm sure yeah, it's plenty. It's, it's <laughs> Puts down a lot of traction. Well, thank you, man. I've so I'm going to kind of voice over. This is the Liberty Walk C8. Uh, out of Japan, we have Liberty Walk and Rocket Bunny. Rock and Bunny is the basic Pandem kit. The Pandem kit has kind of the angular wheel wells. This being the Liberty Walk uh, kit, uh, also out of Japan, a little bit different uh, in its flavor. Kind of simulates a rainbow flare in the rear, um, which was just be like that arched flare. Um, but it's uh, the kits, uh, you know, much different. Obviously, this is much more traditional as to where Rocket Bunny took a pretty aggressive approach with the wheel wells being angular, like a an older Lamborghini and uh, things like that. So, had to voice this over due to copyright. Looks like an all carbon C8. We're in Anderson Composites booth. You're probably maybe familiar with Anderson Composites. If you have, you may be familiar with Anderson Composites if you have uh, one of their hoods or things like that. They make a lot of carbon products, and in this case, they've done an all carbon C8. In this case, they've done an all carbon C8. Curious. Mm 
quite a kit and we'll get some information on this. I'm sure if you have a C8, you may be very interested in this. Let's go talk to him real quick. Excuse me. Uh, the carbon C8, uh, C8 video on Night Drive TV. Is that a full carbon kit there? Um, it's uh, what, what's, what's available for purchase or what would... Everything you... is available for purchase on it. Uh -huh. um, the, the package itself comes with the rear bumper, the quarter panel, the bottom pole rocker, the fenders, and the front bumper. That's to make it wide. Right. All the other parts are you can buy separately if uh -huh. you didn't want to do the wide. So to complete it, you would right. have to purchase those. Okay. So, the, the so you can run it as a base model narrow body if you buy yeah, the individual. Because we got rockers for the for the base models. We got front splitters. We got you know you can buy the roof stale. You can buy the, the diffusers and roof spoilers. Right. But if you want it to look like this, you got to buy the, the kit as well as a few other separate components. Right. And so the A pillars and whatnot are overlay pieces. Obviously, I mean it's because you got a metal structure beneath the the A pillar and whatnot. No, we, it's these caps. It's, it's, it's basically a cap. Basically. Yeah. Well, that's what plastic is that plastic from. Yeah. The factory, right, and so right. you replace that. So, yeah, replace so literally the whole, yeah. So everything's replaceable, sure. full kit, and available now. Correct. Nice. It's available on our website. Yeah. Yeah. Add, to, add it to cart. Yeah. Add it to cart. That's what he said. Add it to cart. the wide body kit is TJ is street uh, street hunter I'm not sure um, you can look up them be sure yep definitely has street hunter wing so I'm pretty sure that's the street hunter wide body this is uh, I don't know The loop, Vegas loop. These chicks look very satisfied by it. Carbon mirror caps. Let me check out this company here. Let's see what we have here. What can you tell me about? Our, so the full okay. body is all of our stuff. Okay. So, so we're, we're building five total, but they're all carbon fiber, 35 pieces total. Oh, really? So the kit, it, it will only be done as an installed kit by your company? Right. So we actually have wheel and uh, tire choices, suspension choices, brakes, exhaust, all of it. So it's okay. basically a turnkey build. Somebody reaches out to us with a car and then we put it together. Okay. So no. So at any time, do you ever have a plan of selling individual components or we anything? We don't. Not for the C8. We're only going to build five really? of these total. And then we have a Z06 program that's coming out right yeah. behind this. That'll be radical and a little more higher production. I see. So what's the company in total? What is your core brand? as far as product goes so our our we're basically a design and installation facility so we do primarily exotics europeans the c8 is kind of our first uh, foray into the american market because it's 
kind of exotic inspired because right. of the mid engine, you know. Right. So this is kind of what we see as an American supercar. Interesting. So you invested in all the molds, all the ability to make these parts. You only get to do five. That's it. Right. So we, we're we like limited production. Oh my <laughs> God, that's a that's a we, hell of a run. We want our customers that invest in building such a a, a car to kind of be original wherever right. they go. So they're never copied. They never exactly. have a, an imposter, so to speak, with just a hood, just a wing. You got it. Well, I mean, it's all forged carbon, obviously. I mean, it's yep. interior. Uh, Full custom interior, all Italian suede from Alcantara. Uh, we took every panel off, wrapped it, um, steering wheel, everything. Wow. So can customers come to you for anything individually? It has to be the whole package? That's correct. Yeah. If you're talking about a C8 and you want to build this wide body, it's the full package. We have four of them already sold, so we only have one remaining. Oh, boy. Um, so, so what's the numbers? Do we get to hear the numbers? Uh, they start. You mean starting price? Yeah, I mean, what would you expect to pay for something so like this? So something like this kit where it's absolutely everything, uh, you're around 165000 So uh, you provide the C8? Correct. And then it gets installed. What's the timeline on something like that? Something like this is around three to six months, yeah. depending on if we have any hangups. And where are you located? We're, we're in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Just oh, really? Chicago. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Well, it's a great looking car. I mean, it's, it's. I was just saying on the video... We see the Pandem kit and Street Hunter from TJ, but yep. this is the I think this is probably the only unique to this year maybe kit that's come out that's got its own design, I yeah. think. Thank you very so, much. So when did you actually pen all this and have the first come out? I mean, So we started it during COVID 2020. I had the first yeah. car, in, one of the first cars into Michigan. And then we revealed a prototype version last year in the Gentex booth. This oh. is the first customer build uh, chassis that we finished uh, this year. So this is it. Right. So no future product individually, do you think? No, no individual product. Dang. For C8. A lot of people are going to be upset. Know, you they're, realize they're this, right? upset. We get it through Instagram all the time. People are mad. But I get it. I, hopefully people understand what we're trying to do. This is just the beginning of what we're going to create long term. So oh. there will be opportunities for production runs. Right. It just won't be on this particular car. I see. Sounds good, man. Well, we'll look forward to Z06, right? Thanks, guys. That's right. Thank I you. appreciate it. All right, man. I think this is for 3D floor mats. They must make some floor mats for the C8, I would hope. I don't know. Pretty aggressive rear wing setup. Not sure who makes it. Can't sell you. I guess look up this company maybe. Obviously this is your Instagram here, whoever that's owns it. Interesting. Well, quite a number of the Pandem kits here. Rocket Bunny. Anderson Composites Hood. So, nothing new that I'm really seeing in terms of wide bodies or accessories. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, the first day, I really get out there and try and get every single Corvette. And uh, we really, uh, many miles today. So, you know, it's still very spread out. Lots of vendors out there, but uh, just not a concentration of cars like we're used to seeing year in and year out. Uh, obviously, things have changed since one SEMA was actually did not happen uh, two years ago. And now we've, uh, seen some changes and some, uh, some different things happening. So some repeats like this car here, I've been tampy that you could see there's some things happening in the aftermarket. We'll see where this is going to go. Uh, overall, I hope you enjoyed the video and seeing all the Corvettes there, please, as always, uh, sub to the channel. I do a lot of other Corvette things. Please like this video. This is a lot of work for you guys and thumbs down. They just killed the video. So thanks for watching and, uh, see you again.